You're watching Vinyl at Puma Gaming. What's up guys, I'm back with yet another Borderlands 2 countdown video, and today I figured it would be appropriate to go back and update one of my older countdown videos for Borderlands 2. So, about a year ago now, I made a video on Borderlands 2's worst skills, and because Gearbox patched the game after I made that video, some skills got reworked and are better now. Specifically, Cloud Kill in particular is really good now, and holy crap, does Maya kill things in normal mode really fast. I'll go ahead now and issue a trigger warning, because I feel like it's appropriate. Unlike my usual Borderlands 2 worst countdowns, I'm going to have very limited, if any, vulgarity. I'm thinking I might go back to some of the vulgarity someday, but I ultimately want to wait until after we're through November. I'm also ranking skills based on my and some other people's experiences with them. You may find in some certain situations that some of these skills could be decent. However, I don't find all of these skills to be useful 100% of the time. Now that you have braced for impact, these will be the top 10 worst skills in Borderlands 2. Number 10, Axton's Duty Calls. Okay, so I definitely triggered somebody with this one. Let me discuss the skill and then I will elaborate on my thoughts with it. Duty Calls adds a flat damage and fire rate boost to Axton, and in terms of boosts, it's actually superior to Axton's impact skill. However, the catch is that Duty Calls only works with non-elemental guns and weapons. So, no explosive, fire, corrosive, shock, or slag weapons work with the skill. The problem is that elemental weapons usually deal more damage to enemies and improve more from elemental damage bonuses that you can receive from relics, skills, and other things. Plus, if you're using a Jacob's weapon anyway, the fire rate bonus usually doesn't matter. The only reason I would recommend Duty Calls is if you were going to use something like the Jacob's Gatling Gun, the Jacob's Maggie, or even the Jacob's Becca. All three of those are good weapons and would greatly benefit from the improved damage. Otherwise, the only gun I could think of that benefits from Duty Calls is the Lascal, and while that's a good SMG, you're better off using the Sandhawk. I'll admit that Duty Calls isn't totally horrible, but it's not a particularly great skill either. Number 9, Salvador's I'm Ready Already. So what this skill does is it boosts your gun zerking or action skill cooldown rate by anywhere from 5 to 25%, depending on the number of points that you put into it. Now at face value, this actually sounds pretty good, and I suppose if you are a lower level gun zerker, maybe it's actually worth using. The problem is, is that there are two other skills that pretty much negate the need for this skill entirely. The first is a skill that's called Get Some, which reduces cooldown by 0.6 to 3 seconds depending on your level. And the second skill is Yippie Kai Yay, which boosts the duration of Gunzerking by 0.6 to 3 seconds every time an enemy is killed. And theoretically, if you could kill enemies fast enough, you could fully recharge your action skill while you are Gunzerking. So there's no point in improving your cooldown rate at all. My advice is simply this. Don't waste your time with this skill. Spec in to get some, yippee ki -yay, and last longer, and Gunzerk forever. Number 8. Zero's Unforeseen. I guess I sort of get the appeal for Unforeseen. As long as enemies attack the decoy and it blows up in their face, it will deal damage to those enemies. However, I've been in very few, if any, situations where I've killed someone with the Unforeseen Explosive Decoy. This is because most enemies in Borderlands 2 are shooting at you, and unless you're playing Melee Zero and you're up against enemies that can only melee you, you're going to have problems with getting the explosion to hit enemies. My other issue is that the explosion only deals shock damage. This would have been way more useful if it was just generic explosive damage, or if you could change the elemental damage somehow. So maybe if you were wielding like a fire gun and then you activated deception, uh, you would get like a fire explosion at the end. I think we all know that Zero's got a lot of really good skills. Unforeseen, it isn't one of them. Number seven, Maya's Backdraft. As I understand it, this skill got buffed in the October 29th, 2015 patch. Uh, maybe it's a little bit better now, but from my experiences of using it, it still really sucks. So what Backdraft does is it adds additional fire damage to your melee attacks, and when your shields deplete, you get a Fire Nova that emits from your character. Now, this is actually a pretty cool idea. 
Uh, maybe if there was an efficient way to combine this with either Blight Phoenix or Immolate, you might get a really interesting way to play Maya. The problem is, is that Maya, unlike Zero and Krieg, is not designed for melee at all. I suppose you could get a Roid Shield and kind of make it work, but really you're better off using a melee character. Plus, melee damage is partially based on character level anyway, and in OP8 difficulty, you're going to deal less damage than you would if you used a gun, because you can't become level 80. Don't do melee Maya, play melee Krieg or Zero instead. Number 6. Zero's Kill Confirmed. So this is actually a somewhat interesting skill. The longer you aim down the site, the better your critical bonus is. Uh, your critical bonus gets boosted by anywhere from 8 to 40%, depending on how many points that you have in the skill, and provided that you have the right class mods. You can actually get this bonus up to 88% critical bonus, if you have 11 out of 5 in Kill Confirmed. However, there's a wide variety of problems with Kill Confirmed. The first is that you have to be aiming down the sights in order to even use the skill. Uh, not only do you move slower while aiming down sights, but your field of view is hampered as well. The second issue is that it takes a while for the full critical bonus to charge. While you can sometimes get it to charge faster if you press the aim button enough, the slow stack charge speed really hurts kill confirmed in my opinion. Maybe if it was a little more instantaneous, it would be a lot more useful. Avoid kill confirmed, You'll thank me later. Number five, Krieg's Bloody Revival. Now, the bonuses for this skill are really good. 150% more damage with Assault Rifle sounds amazing, especially if you've managed to accrue 100 stacks of Bloodlust. After all, at five out of five, you get 1.5% additional Assault Rifle damage per stack of Bloodlust. The only problem is that you have to be in fight for your life in order to receive the bonus to your assault rifle damage. I have no idea why Gearbox decided to do it this way. If this was a bonus that you could have all of the time, it could have possibly made assault rifles really good on a Creed, especially once you start adding in the effects from other skills like blood filled guns and nervous blood. It would have been really powerful. Another problem is that Krieg has the Light the Fuse skill, which could override Fight for Your Life and would make this skill entirely useless to even spec into. And because of that conflict, Bloody Revival is literally a waste of skill points. Ultimately, I think Bloody Revival could be good, and in my opinion, it really shouldn't require Fight for Your Life. Number four, Axton's Laser Sight. You would think that having a laser sight on your turret would be a good thing. Now, what I will say is that laser sight does make Axton's turret more accurate, plus your bonus can be anywhere from 10 to 50%, which I would say isn't really that bad. However, I would say that the turrets are relatively accurate without laser sight, and the bulk of the damage dealt with the turret comes from the Scorched Earth skill, which is an area of effect rocket attack. The problem with laser sight is that it takes longer for the turrets to acquire enemy targets. Given your turret is only going to be out like 6 to 12 seconds anyway, that is a major problem. You figure it already takes some time for Axton's turret to deploy, you really don't want it to take any longer than it should to acquire new enemy targets. I look at it this way too, if you're at a lower level, you're better off putting points into either Sentry, Ready, or Willing for the bonus that those provide. Both Ready and Willing are active regardless of whether the turret is out or not. Don't spec into laser sight, it sucks. Number three, Krieg's Fuel the Rampage. What I will say is that if you're playing solo, Fuel the Rampage is actually pretty good. The ability to take damage and transfer that into a faster cooldown so you can reactivate your action skill quickly can be really useful. However, the biggest problem with Fuel the Rampage is that teammates can damage you and potentially put you into fight for your life constantly. This can be a major problem if you're playing online and someone is trying to grief you, and it can also be a problem if your teammates are using weapons like the Norfleet, or they have abilities that inflict massive area of effect damage. While it's true that with the Slab class mod that you can get the damage taken from teammates down to 1%, keep in mind that the damage scaling in UVHM and beyond gets really high. What I will say is if you're playing solo melee Krieg, Definitely pick up Fuel the Rampage. If not, and you're playing in co-op, avoid this skill. It'll save you a lot of frustration. Number two, Gage's 1-2 Boom. What a 
boatload of ice. This skill is just really stupid. It's Death Trap's ability where he creates this massive energy ball that can very rarely hit enemies. Usually what you're supposed to do is shoot the orb to deal a decent amount of damage over a wide area, and while I like 1-2 Boom's blast radius, there are a fair amount of problems with the skill itself. The first is that you have to rely on Death Trap to do it. You can't really control this ability yourself, limiting its predictability while mobbing or even up against bosses. You'll find that this becomes even worse when you start trying to combine this with the other Death Trap ability skills. The other problem I found is that it usually seems to take more than one shot to get the orb to explode. Finally, the damage dealt here is mostly shock damage, which is only going to be really useful up against the crabs from the Cromorax DLC and not very much else. Save the one point that you would put in this skill and put it in literally anything else. And finally, number one, Krieg's Hellfire Halitosis. This skill is worthless. While I would say that the vast majority of melee override skills are bad, Hellfire Halitosis in particular is really awful. All this does is allows Krieg to breathe fire at enemies. The only reason I could think of why you would want to use this skill is simply for novelty's sake. Sure, maybe you could ignite an enemy with Hellfire Halitosis, but there are literally so many other superior ways to trigger fire damage over time effects on your enemies. Think about it. Raving Retribution emits homing balls of fire that are designed to burn enemies. All you literally have to do to get the skill to work is have a point in Raving Retribution and have an enemy deal damage to you. Why you would want to put in the additional effort of approaching an enemy and hitting the melee button to ignite them is beyond me. Especially when you consider that Hellfire Halitosis has inferior range and it's more difficult to be accurate with. Hellfire Halitosis might just be one of, if not the worst skills in Borderlands 2. Alright guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like and let me know what do you think is the worst skill in Borderlands 2. Otherwise guys, again, take care and I'll see y'all next time.